the numbers were different. So if you could tell me what the numbers were, I'll write that up there. It turns out the three classes that I did this with, we all ended up exactly the same spot. So that was kind of interesting. What were the boxes that I had up here? Can anyone help me out? Say this again. 100. 40. Oh, look. That was what was up here, wasn't it? That's funny. Okay. And go ahead. I changed this to a... What were the boxes that we ended up with? Okay. And what was down here? No, no. Was it point seven and point eight? Yeah. So it's just like what I had. So really, it was only one number different. That's kind of that's kind of funny. All right. So anyway, um, and then did I get around to asking you what you? Oh, and then can I see your paper? I did that on purpose. Okay. Thank you. All right. Right there. Right. Okay, so what was the measurement? What were the measurements that you guys were all writing down? And I think we had gotten to this point. Maybe not. Did we write any measurements down? Okay, so what were the ones you guys had? I know somebody had a 147.76. I know that was up there. Were there others? Yes. Did anybody have anything different than those? Yes. Did you really? Yeah. Okay. I don't okay. <laughs> I think I remember writing that one down. I kind of looked at you then too, didn't I? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what else did you? Yeah. Okay. And was there anything else that was different? By now we were getting pretty good at this, so you should have been pretty close. Really, the thing that I'm asking now is, um, met, we're going to eliminate this one. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. And actually, it comes down to mainly these two, which is probably what most of you had, I would imagine, right? So, and here is the, if anybody needs a desk from 1958, please feel free to take that. Um, I, anyway. Um, this I said there was uh, one last little thing we needed to learn with this. And remember I said a measurement tells us three things. One, it tells us the magnitude, the amount of stuff. In this case, 147, blah, 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 blah. Okay? The second thing it tells us is the unit that it was measured in, in this case, grams. And lastly, the, a measurement tells you, when you look at it, how good your instrument was. Okay. Now, there's two words that we're, we use in measurement a lot, and they are precision and accuracy. Many, I'm sure you guys were introduced to this concept at some point in time in your careers, okay? but many students I find, many people, in my opinion, have a tendency to misuse those two words because they think they mean the same thing, and they don't uh, when it applies to measurement. Okay. Would anyone like to uh, tell me what the word accuracy refers to? Go ahead. Your, um, like if it was a dart board and you're throwing darts, your dart hits close to the center. To the thing that you're aiming for, whether obviously you don't play darts very much because it's not always the bullseye that you're aiming for. Yeah. But anyway, the, whatever it is you're aiming for, you're very, very close to that mark. How about measurements? Good. Great dartboard analogy. Now, how does accuracy apply to measurements? Oh, we stumble a little bit there. Okay. So if you want a definition, um, it would be how close your measurement is to an accepted value or one that is known to be true. Now, that means somebody at some, or other people at some point in time had to make a bunch of measurements of this same thing and come up with kind of an average 
so that we know what is known to be true or accepted. Does that make any sense? So you are going to have to compare um, your result to something else to find out if it's accurate or not. The other word is precision. And actually precision, as far as measurement is concerned, actually has two different, there's two different ways to use the word precision. Would anyone like to throw out one of them? Or maybe you thought that was also accurate. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. And then here we go. One of these measurements is more precise. Which one is that? The point seven six zero because there is more information available. It goes out to a smaller decimal place. You see where I'm going with that? That one's more precise. Okay. Um, and that's what, uh, again, that's the third thing that a measurement will tell us is how precise is our instrument. Remember we said that when you write down a measurement, you always include all the digits that are known. Okay, do we know the 1, the 4, the 7, the 6, or uh, uh, 1, 4, 7, 7? Do we know those for sure? Well, 1, 47. <laughs> we also know this number for sure. Okay. Do we know that number for sure? The six. Absolutely. Was it okay? That is one that was capable. That was there. I mean, that was identified. Okay. But when I told you that all the numbers that are known plus one estimated digit, did we estimate that digit? No. That one was known. Correct. But if this is all that we had written down on our paper if you're aware of how measurements are written down, you would say, oh, well, this is the one that we knew. This one was estimated. So, but that's not true in this case, is it? Okay. But this measurement tells us, okay, we knew this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and this is the place that would have been estimated. And if it were not exactly on that line, would we have estimated somewhere in between those lines? Right. So what we need to do is convey the information to people that are looking at our measurement that this balance was able to measure to the thousands place. It just so happened that the marker ended up being exactly on a line. So we do have to write the zero because that tells us information about the instrument that was used. This is a better instrument than this one. Or in other words, this is a more precise instrument than this one. Does that make any sense? So, because I think that's happened to you guys before, do you write down the zero? And has that conversation ever come up before? Has that question ever come up in your brain before? Should I write down a zero there? This is why we do. It, it conveys information about the, the instrument. Okay, that was a pretty easy thing. Um, what is the other use of the word precision? Okay, so let's say we got out one of the balances and I gave you this marker and I said, find its mass, but do it three times. Okay? So you would get out the darn little balance. Excuse me, excuse me, pardon me. I'm going to go ahead and take it up here so the video can kind of actually see it. You guys, oh, have you guys used these yet? Okay, I got you. So, so they're they're a little bit lower. Pan over here, same idea. Yes. Okay. Um, those measure to the hundredths place. These measure to the, as it turns out, all these ins all these uh, things that I've been putting up here are exactly like the instruments that we're going to be using. This one measures to the thousandths of a gram. The thousandths of a gram. That's incredibly precise. I mean, that's very nice to get to the next decimal place. Uh, the ten thousandths of a gram. Turns out I have three of those balances. They're electronic. It's okay. Uh, it's about two thousand dollars a piece. Yeah. Okay. So um, precision comes with a cost. But anyway, works exactly like the ones that you've used before. Okay. Yeah, I'm telling you this right now. It's so funny. You know, you're, you're always supposed to zero out your balance before you use it. You guys have done this before. Okay, and so the little way to do that on this particular balance, and this is not even close, so I don't know what's going on here. There's this little knob over here. 
okay? And you twist it one way or the other, and something's not quite right here. And here, oh. This was a brand new balance not so long ago. What's wrong with this picture? It's melted. Now, what would cause plastic to melt? Heat. Excellent. How would heat get there? Or, actually, it wasn't a beaker, but it was other things. Okay? I'm telling you right now, never, ever put anything that's too hot to touch on the balance. Because this is what happens and it ruins it. And we may be into a problem now where that's been melted so much that um, it may have ruined it. And then the other thing you guys have it, not you guys, because you don't know yet, there's numbers written here, here, and here. All three of those numbers have to match up because um, they're all calibrated. Um, yeah, so all the numbers match up, so guess what the problem is? Somebody ruined the balance. I'm going to guess multiple people ruined the balance, but whatever. Um, so anyway, you zero it out. Now here's where I have students come up to me when they're um, doing this. They'll say, Mr. Lyman, my balance won't zero out. And 98% of the time, this is how I fix it. So they come and track me down. Mr. Lyman, my balance won't zero out. I'm like, okay. And I come up. And I look at it, and I go like this. And I touch one of the sliders that wasn't exactly on the zero, and then it zeroes out. And they're like, oh, I feel dumb now. So don't let that happen to you. All right, so anyway, there we go. It's zeroed out. Um, now, you are going to take that blue marker. You're going to measure its mass three. I'm not going to make you do it right now. Okay, you're going to measure its mass three times. Okay, and these are the results that you get. Just for fun, what do you think that has? What do you think its mass might be? Thousand grams? Five grams? Anybody? Four grams? Ooh, nice estimate. Okay, toss it over here, please. I trust you. Sort of. Um, that's it. You guys got four grams? 4.72 or whatever you said? What's that? 400 grams. Well, this thing only measures out to three, so 300. You guys don't have any idea what a gram is, do you? This is kind of where I'm going with this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 4D? Is that what you just said? Okay. Now we have, see, now we have some logic. I like logic. I like people that have thought things through. Before I asked you, you're like, oh, I don't know, because you've never thought about it. But then if you take five seconds of things, you may not have known about the paperclip thing. Did you guys know this? Some of you did, some of you didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so anyway, a nickel is about five grams. Paperclip is about one gram. Now you guys have a reference point, right? Okay, well, let's try the 40, see what happens first. Oh, a little bit less than 40. Good try, though. A little bit less than 30. A little bit less than 20. Oh, somewhere in between 10 and 20. Okay, and then we come over here. And we're, look, 15-something, okay. And then we fiddle with that thing. Okay, so let's say someone, Emma, did this and had 15.138 grams and 15.136 grams and 15.13, let's call it uh, 6 grams. What can you say about the confidence in those measurements that Emma made for the marker. Or 
are we pretty confident in its mass? We'll come back to that. These three measurements would be said to be precise because they're similar to each other. Remember I said there are two different ways of thinking of precision. Not only does it convey the amount of information that's available, but it also when you have a set of measurements of the same thing, uh, if you're getting repeatable results, they would said to be precise. Okay? Um, so we're pretty confident in that, in that, okay? But what if she had not zeroed it out? Would she have gotten the same results over and over and over again? Yes. Would they have been accurate? No. See, do you see the difference now? Okay, so whenever you're reading your instruments or any instruments like that that have the ability to be uh, zeroed out, make sure you're doing that. Um, or, you know, like I said, sometimes, you know, people will, have, uh, people will have their little slider just slightly not exactly on one of the little ridges, and that's going to be enough to cause things to go bad. So, take, you know, be patient when you take good measurements. So now we have precision, both forms of precision. We now have accuracy. We know how to read the scales. We understand what, what happens if we end up exactly on the line. We do need to include the zero um, as if we were able to estimate. And probably the reason that you had a one is the angle that you had here probably wasn't very good. Okay, so we also have to read our instruments at eye level. We good on measurement? Our first lab that we do when measurements are required, um, here's what's going to happen. It, it, I'm a really big pain on it the first time. No, I'm a pain on it all year long, okay? But the first time I'll allow you, I, I make you redo it. So here's what's going to happen. I mean, when it time comes, if we're a little ways away from that, like a week or so away. But when the time comes, you guys are going to be taking a bunch of measure, a mass measures, a bunch of volume measurements. I know the precision level of the instruments, okay? And I'm going to assume now that I've taught you guys how to do this stuff that you also are going to be using the instruments appropriately, writing everything down to the precision level of the instrument that you have available to you. And you're going to come and show me your data table. And if your data does not match up with what I know to be true, I'm going to send you back and have you redo it. No big deal. Uh, has anybody ever tried to bake anything at home and screw it up? And what do you do? You start over. Okay? It's okay. Starting over is okay. In fact, it's a good thing because you recognize that, oh, I did something wrong. I need to fix that. And so you go start over again. No big deal. You're never going to be in trouble for redoing a lab. Okay? It's going to be on your own time most of the time, but that's okay. You can always redo a lab if you don't aren't getting the results that you feel that you need to get before you turn it in. Now, once you turn it in, you're kind of stuck. Anyway, um, yeah, that first lab, I'm going to send you back and make you do it right so that at least you've done it right one time. From that point forward, though, the labs are worth 100 points each. Um, from that point forward, if you hand a lab in to me and you turn it in and say, I'm done, this is it, and your data doesn't isn't measured the way it should be, it's immediate 20 points off. Did anyone ever ask me when the retakes are in this class? You guys ever have retakes in other classes? No one ever got around to asking me that, did you? You know when the retakes are for this class? Next year. I'll let you think that one through. Pardon? Nothing. <laughs> You retake the class. That's, so that's when the retakes are. Okay, moving on. We're done holding. We're done holding hands here. Um, let me see. Next, any questions on this stuff? You'll be good. Let's move this over here. Now, one thing I wanted to point out. I think I did. I did this. I tried to do this on purpose. You have three different instruments that you have scales drawn now in your papers, right? You'll notice that all three of those were precise to different, or had different levels of precision. Would you agree? The ruler was precise to the? Ooh, was it really? I didn't draw a very good ruler. What did you have for your measurement for the ruler? What was the measurement? 28.2.
No, it doesn't matter because they're, they're the same. Danny doesn't seem to have his available right now. Oh, I see. Yep, in that case it was. Oh, it was my volume that I want. Okay, usually I do it the other way around. And what was the volume? To the hundredths place. And then obviously the balance was to the top. Where I'm going with this is, I think a lot of, in some of your classes earlier, not necessarily because your teachers weren't a good teacher, it was the fact that you weren't studying that at the time. So have you ever asked your teacher, well, how many decimal places do I write this out to? Okay, because you haven't known, you haven't been taught that information yet, and that's what I'm actually starting to do right now. Um, so anyway, from this point forward, you now have been taught, and uh, you are now required any instrument that you ever use in this class, and hopefully for the rest of your life, you're going to record to the appropriate decimal place based on the precision level of the instrument. It's just a given from this point forward. Does that make any sense? They all don't read to the same level of precision. So you're just going to have to look at the actual scale and figure out what it should be measured to. All right. Now, where does all this lead to? Um, I asked you guys, did I ask you about this at all, if you'd ever been, do you have any idea what this means? Significant figures? Okay. Um, so you have been given a little bit of information on this, some of you? Okay. Um, what significant figures r really refers to? is the precision level of the measurement that you're looking at. This measurement has how many significant figures? Five. Why? Because those were the digits that were capable of being measured on the instrument. So you can use either phrase that you want. You can use the phrase significant figures or significant digits, same, same thing. Or you can use measure, uh, digits that were capable of being measured on the instrument. Which one are you going to prefer? Significant digits? Okay. But they, me they, they mean the same thing. <coughs> and this is where I'm going. Significant digits are the digits that are capable of being measured on the instrument. In this case, there were how many significant digits? Six, because there were six digits that were capable of being measured on that instrument. On the ruler example that I gave you guys, how many significant digits were in that measurement? I think it was just three, wasn't it? 20 something? 20.2. All three of those were capable of being measured, three significant digits. On the, um, what was it, the graduated cylinder example, how many significant figures in that one? There were four in that one. Do you see where I'm going with this? Determining the number of significant digits is not really that difficult. Again, it comes down to how many are in, were capable of being measured. Here is a possible, there's only one number that ever, ever, ever causes any problem with significant digits. Those of you with some familiarity, do you know what that number is? Zero. Because zeros can show up in a lot of different places, right? Sometimes they're significant, sometimes they're not, and there's the only problem you guys are ever going to have with this is figuring out which zeros are, which zeros aren't. But if you use that rule, capable of being measured on the instrument, it usually solves most of the problems. So for example, how many significant figures in this measurement? <laughs> See? <we want laughs> Even though I told you the answer, or how to get the answer, before we even, I even asked the question, we're still confused. And like I said, zeros do this. Let me try this again. How many digits were capable of being measured on the instrument? There were six that were capable. So this measurement has six significant digits. See where I'm going with that? The zero got some of you already. Oh, yeah. It has to be, because are we good at estimating? We're very good at it. It, it counts. Okay? I know you, you're not used to having to deal with that, but if you've ever used an electronic device, that last digit is also being, through software, estimated. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. You ever have a number that kind of goes back and forth? You're not 
you guys ever use like an electronic scale before or a thermometer or something like that and that last digit sometimes will kind of go bounce back and forth a little bit by the way which of those numbers do you always add or do you always write down when it's going back and forth no you always go for the higher one okay I'm just saying that's just that's just a, because the software itself is having a hard time distinguishing between which way to go but it is getting up to that last one so you write that one down that's just the rule okay um, moving on so we have now entered the significant measurements now we're in the significant figures Now, what were the three measurements that we ended up concluding? Uh, what was the uh, um, the length one? 28.2, 28.2 centimeters. What was the um, volume one? Great, great, great. Thank you. I did. I tried to do this on purpose to get a zero in various places on this. You'll see why here in a second. And that last one was 147.760. Okay. And I think that was grams. All right. So through our discussion that we've just had, we've concluded that, well, there's no zeros here. So all three of these have, or all three of those are significant or capable of being measured or had been, had been measured on the instrument. Okay. How about here? Yes? You mean that was capable of being measured? Yes. Sure. If the hundredth place was capable of being measured, wasn't the tenth place also? Right. So this one has four significant figures. And we've already discussed really one of the main problems that students will have is this one. Okay. And this, as this uh, sits, it has six significant figures, six significant digits. Everyone hunky-dory there. Now, when are zeros not significant? Here's the rule. If a zero is serving only as a placeholder, it is not significant. I'll give you two or three examples up here. This zero is not only serving as a placeholder, okay, because we have information that was um, uh, available after it that make any sense? This zero, the reason that we included that in our significant digits is because the zero was capable of being measured on the instrument, it just wasn't represented there. Okay? So what are some examples of zeros that are only serving as placeholders? Somebody give me a unit, I don't care. We'll go liters just to make it something that is like viable. And let me see, one. There we go. Now we've got some zeros that might be significant, capable of being measured, or were measured, and zeros that uh, might not, or might just be serving as placeholders. First of all. Here's a little habit that I need you to get into. If you're ever writing out a number that is a decimal, always write one zero to the left. Have you ever heard this rule before? A couple of reasons for that mainly it has to do with if you guys ever looked at a dot on a piece of paper and asked whether it was thought to yourself, is this a decimal point or is this a period or is this just a stray mark on the paper? You've had that question come up, okay? But by doing it this way, you eliminate that, okay? So always have one to the left. I'm telling you right now, that is never, ever, ever significant. We don't even look at it. We write it, but we don't even look at it. You guys good? Now, what about these zeros here? Because they are not placeholders. I understand that, but are they measured? Okay. What is the purpose of these zeros? They are placeholders. How do I know they're placeholders? 
Ah, there's that. That's good. We're going to get there, okay? If I got rid of those zeros, is it still the same number? No, it's a completely different number, right? So why are these zeros there? They're placeholders. So these are not significant. What about that zero? Yeah, it was capable of being measured. It just didn't happen to have any value at that point in time. So this is significant. And what about that zero? Uh, we, but what does it tell us? That's the same zero as that one. Does that make any sense? The instrument was capable of measuring to this decimal place. There just didn't happen to be any value at that time. So that one's significant. So in this case, there are four significant figures. And over here. How about this one? Yeah, I think you're, you're seeing that if it's a zero embedded in between more other numbers, it's definitely significant. So yes. And of course, we know the one and the two are. What about these? Significant? No, they're placeholders. And if you can imagine getting rid of those zeros, is that the same number? No, so they're placeholders. It means they're not significant. So once again, at this instant, about six of you have it down pretty well. You still make a little mistake here and there, but probably not that often. About another six of you are like, ah, I think I'm really close. And there's about five of you that are going, what in the world is he talking about up there? It will, it, it's all going to make sense. It really will. Because this is from this point forward, we're always going to be doing this, um, as far as measurements are concerned. Um, hmm, I should be like, what, two minutes left? Less than one. Okay. I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to try this on your own. Do you guys want the yellow pieces of paper? Uh, yes. Excellent. Yeah, you all may not get yellow. Give me a second. I need to explain which parts of this uh, you are to be doing. I'm completely guessing on how many that is. I'll just give these two to you two. Hold on. You'll see that there are two different levels. It says level three and level two. You are to do number one on each level. Number one on each level. If you look at it, Zach, you'll figure out what I'm saying. Number one. Ah, one extra. Oh, no more now. Have a good weekend, everyone. <laughs>